Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News, on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's do something different. I know there are many here online who talk about how great they are who talk about how they called fights, etc. Okay, good for them, right? Let's do the opposite. Let's talk about fighters who baffle me, right? The fighters who I consider to be my blind spots. The guys who, when I'm watching a fight, I think, wow, how is this guy being successful. How come opponents aren't able to do better? What is it about this guy in the ring that I can't figure out? Right? Let me just point out the most watched video I ever made here online, and it's still up. No doubt it's still getting views. Was when I called Oscar De La Hoya over Manny Pacquiao, right? Wrong call. Somehow that video um, received more than 80,000 hits, right? I try to live out in public. My hits and misses are online for all to see, right? So let's talk about the fighters who, quite frankly, are my blind spots, right? This isn't a victory, excuse me, this isn't... <laughs> a video about the victories. This is a video about the guys who mystify me and continue to do so. I'm not going to talk about, you know, fighters who I think I've figured out and near misses, right? I know in the Johnny Gonzalez, Abner, uh, excuse me, the Johnny Gonzalez, Jorge Arce fight, I predicted there'd be a knockout in the first nine and a half rounds. That was a swing and a miss. The knockout did happen, but it happened in the 11th round. I'm not talking about that level of being wrong. I'm talking about guys who, as I see them, I don't understand how the fighter is as successful as he is. So let's start the list. Number one is Deontay Wilder. Right? I'm doing this in no particular order, but Wilder was the first name that popped in my head. I cannot tell you how vulnerable I believe Wilder is in the ring. How limited I privately feel Wilder is. When I see Wilder, let's just say I don't see a complete fighter. Right? Wilder has punching power. No question about it. He's unbeaten. He has won big fights by early knockout. Right? Audley Harrison, knocked out. Let's give Wilder credit. He actually traveled to the UK for that match. Malik Scott, knocked out. Right? Wilder comes in the ring and he does exactly what you think he's going to do. He's throwing power shots early. He has a brilliant long right hand. No question about it. But I see no power from distance from his left hand. Right? I don't believe Deontay Wilder can fight inside. At least I haven't seen him fight inside. I see a fighter who's inaccurate when he's not throwing that long, straight right hand. So much so that I've seen Wilder fights where he's hitting guys behind their ears. Right? When I see Wilder, he's a tall guy. His body looks open to me. Now, I understand why another tall guy, Vladimir Klitschko, is hard to get inside on, right? I see Vladimir Klitschko operating behind a great jab, right? I don't see that great jab with Deontay Wilder. Certainly, it's not as stiff as Vladimir Klitschko's jab, which is very stiff, right? So, I have to say, I'm puzzled as to how this guy has remained unbeaten, right? I, you know, I believe there's going to be a fight where it looks like a car crash with him. 
right, where he gets undressed. Some guy gets inside and Wilder doesn't know what to do. But that fight hasn't happened yet. So I have to say, right now, I'm baffled with regard to Wilder. I feel more bullish on fighters like Bermain Stavern, Bryant Jennings, right? Obviously, Vladimir Klitschko, David Hay, right? I, I understand those guys. I don't understand Deontay Wilder. Another guy I don't understand is Peter Quillen. This is another guy who's unbeaten. Unlike Wilder, Quillen actually had a title, right? Quillen vacated the title because there's a huge possibility of a fight between him and Danny Jacobs, right? If you're from New York City, you understand that a Quillen-Jacobs fight probably sells out the Barclays Center, right? So, you know, sometimes champs will vacate titles for financial reasons, but someone's going to have to explain to me how a fighter who is as stiff and as low volume as Peter Quillen is, who doesn't move particularly well, is as successful as Peter Quillen, right? We saw another stiff fighter, Kelly Pavlik who I thought had a much better jab than Peter Quillen's, get completely outgunned, completely undressed by Bernard Hopkins, right? I'm surprised that there haven't been crisis moments in Peter Quillen fights. You know, I thought Hassan Njikam was going to undress Peter Quillen. And then Quillen knocked him down several times in the fight, right? That's really a tale of two fights. If Hassan and Jacob were able to stay on his feet, he probably would have won the fight by several rounds. But the genius, and it is genius, of Peter Quillen is he doesn't allow boxers to stay upright. I'm surprised he's able to catch boxers with the regularity that he does. A guy like Hassan and Jickham, I could see him getting knocked down once or twice in a fight, right? But to get knocked down that many times, I'm just wondering what part of the Quillen story am I missing, right? How's he able to catch guys, given that he's so low volume and so stiff? Bluntly put, it's a mystery to me. Another guy who's a mystery, a blind spot, is unbeaten, Carl Frampton. I look at Carl, right? The casinos obviously know who he is, right? Kiko Martinez was a 4-1 to underdog in their rematch. But I just don't like Carl's feet. You know, Frampton at times will operate on his back foot and he has his hands low. But I don't see Ray Leonard type upper body movement. In other words, here's a guy dropping his hands without the upper body movement to dodge punches. Right? He seems naked to me in the ring. I don't understand how a guy hasn't been able to smother him. How a guy hasn't been able to get inside and work his body. Seems to me that Frampton needs a little space to unload power shots. But yet in fight after fight, he somehow seems to get that space. Right? I, I just don't get it. You know, Frampton's balance too. You know, he doesn't seem always ready to me to throw power punches. Let's just say when I watch his balance, I don't see Floyd Mayweather. Right? But, Frampton has beaten reputable guys. Kiko Martinez was on quite a run when Frampton destroyed him in the rematch. And as you look at that rematch, Frampton is winning round after round, right? With footwork that isn't always there. 
right? So uh, Frampton is another blind spot. Now, perhaps my biggest blind spot, and I'll, I'll nod at this fighter's fans, because this fighter's fans for years have been accusing me of being against this guy, right? You know, I'm just trying to call it as I see it. I don't have any animus against any individual fighter. Quite frankly, I view this guy as a Hall of Famer. I tip my hat to this guy for fighting very tough fights. This guy has fought Zab Judah. He's fought Sugar Shane Mosley. He's fought Manny Pacquiao. He's fought Floyd Mayweather. He's fought Sergio Martinez. He's fought Antonio Margarito not once, but twice. Right? It's almost impossible to even think of an argument that this guy is ducking people. Right? The fighter I'm talking about is not Manny Pacquiao or Canelo. Although I know there are groups out there who feel I'm biased against those guys. I'm not, by the way. I respect both of those guys quite a bit. The fighter I'm talking about is Miguel Cotto. Right? And uh, I'll concede that Cotto has been more successful than I thought he would be. The very first video I posted online, and let me just say, I didn't think when I was posting videos early on that these videos would appeal to more than just a handful of hardcore boxing people. I believe in that first video I'm wearing a t-shirt or something and I'm sitting on my living room sofa, right? It was Miguel Cotto against the then underdog Antonio Margarito. And back then I doubted Cotto. I didn't see how Cotto could win that fight. Right? Margarito was big. He was relentless. He was front foot heavy, but he was also talented. In other words, this was a guy who, quite frankly, on his front foot, knew how to hide himself. This was a guy who had beaten and unbeaten Sergio Martinez. Well, the fight took place, and in that fight, Cotto looked better than I thought he would. Now, that's the infamous fight where Margarito's hands are bleeding after the fight. Margarito takes off his gloves in the ring. Now, it's significant because... We later found out that Margarito, at least before the Shane Mosley fight, had the ingredients for Pastor of Paris on his hand wraps. Right? Cotto has been diplomatic, but Cotto has suggested strongly that the bruising he suffered in that first fight could not have been caused naturally. Right? But just understand, for purposes of this video, Cotto did much better in that first fight than I thought he would. Right? I did pick against Cotto when he fought Manny Pacquiao. Right? I believe that pick was validated. I'll concede. The fight should not have been stopped in the 12th round. I thought Cotto was lucid and should have been allowed as a great champion to finish the fight. I did pick against Cotto when he fought and lost to Austin Trout. But let me say, there have been fights where I picked against Cotto and I've watched the fight and Cotto has destroyed his opponent. I picked against Cotto, no one might remember this, but I picked against Cotto when he fought a then unbeaten Yuri Foreman. I thought Foreman had exactly the kind of movement to frustrate Cotto. Now true, Foreman's knee explodes in the middle of the fight, but let's just say from the opening bell, Cotto, who was moving up in weight, looked better than I thought he would. I picked against Cotto for the rematch with Antonio Margarito. Now, that rematch, a little vague and ambiguous for me. I thought the way they treated Margarito was unfair, right? Margarito is a guy who wins wars of attrition. 
You can't have the doctor always in the ring between rounds looking at Antonio Margarito's eye. Right? I didn't like how that fight went down. But even there, I'll concede, Cotto did better than expected. And of course, I took middleweight champion, at least then middleweight champion, Sergio Martinez over Cotto. And Cotto looked dominant in that fight. Right? Cotto did a lot of things better than I thought he would in that fight. Now let's talk about why Cotto baffles me. Cotto is a southpaw operating out of an orthodox stance. Right? His feet are inverted. In my opinion, guys with inverted feet don't move as well as guys who are operating out of their natural stance. Right? As I like to say, right? Just like you have a dominant hand, you have a dominant foot. Right? In the NFL, field goal kickers kick with the same leg every time. They don't show up and say, you know, for this kick, I'm going left footed. If this other kick, I'm going right footed. Right? The way your brain works, you favor one leg over the other. Right? You notice it when Kodo is in with other southpaws who are in a natural stance for them and who have the foot speed to move better than Cotto. So I thought, if you look at the Pacquiao film, I thought Pacquiao moved much better than Miguel Cotto. Much better. But, Cotto actually has above average foot speed against most opponents. Right, so it's a bit, you know, it's a bit of a shock to me to see how good he moved against Delvin Rodriguez. Now that he's with Freddie Roach, I was surprised how good he moved against Sergio Martinez. Right, so let's just say I've been a bit surprised at how good Cotto has moved out of an unorthodox stance. Another thing with Cotto, since he's inverted, is that his power hand, his left hand, is his lead hand. Right? The problem with that, as I said in the Manny Pacquiao Cotto pre fight video, is that when Cotto throws a jab, his power is spent because the power hand has already been thrown. Right? This is the moment after you fired the gun that only has one bullet. <coughs> so I thought elite fighters would force him to throw a jab. Once Cotto has thrown that left, I don't believe he has the dynamite in his right hand. Right? If you look at the Manny Pacquiao fight, Pacquiao lingers over by the ropes. Gets Cotto to start throwing a jab. Then Pacquiao times an entry point, jumps in, Cotto has nothing to defend himself with. Right? Another problem with Cotto is that Cotto's a little bit shorter. Right? So, taller fighters, Austin Trout, are able to keep him outside with the jab. Right? Cotto's best punch is that short, and it's short, left hook to the body. One way to avoid getting hit with it is by keeping Cotto outside. Right? Easier said than done. Right? Miguel Cotto has built a Hall of Fame career, has fought the toughest competition, has held his own. I didn't believe either. Maidana Mayweather fight was as close as Mayweather against Cotto. You know, it was only after the Cotto fight that Mayweather actually looked a little bit dinged up. Right? He didn't look dinged up at all after the Canelo fight. He didn't look dinged up at all after either Maidana fight. He looked dinged up after the Miguel Cotto fight. Right? 
I'll say Kodo has surprised me. And what's really surprising with Kodo is as he gains weight, he still hugs. Right? He's not moving away from Big Puncher in Sergio Martinez. He's actually trying to get inside. He's actually trying to throw heavy left hands, even though that was Kodo's first fight at middleweight. Right? It's a bit shocking. Right? Kodo's one of those few fighters who, whatever the weight, he's going to try to land his. Right? I tip my hat to him. I don't quite understand the dynamic. I do feel he beats Canelo. Right? But, you know, I just wonder about Kodo in some of his big fights. Right? To the fans of Kodo who feel I've been unfair to Kodo, I'll admit, Kodo has exceeded my expectations. He's won several fights in which I was a skeptic of him, and I'll concede that point. Let me hear from you. If you know the secret to Deontay Wilder, Peter Quillen, Carl Frampton, or Miguel Cotto, I hope you share it with us, right? If you have blind spots of your own, guys who you've looked at and you just can't figure out why they are as wildly successful as they have been, I hope you leave those takes and that analysis in the comment section to this video, right? Predicting fights, it's, it's tough. Right, especially when you have fighters like these who seem to be able to time and time again beat top notch competition. Right, with a style that might not be readily accessible. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.